Welcome to Fading Memories, a podcast with advice, wisdom, and hope from caregivers who have lived the experience and survived to tell the tale. Think of us as your caregiver best friend. Once again, thank you for joining Fading Memories, listeners. I am very excited to bring you Dr. Joy Kong. We are actually talking about stem cell research and what they are finding in terms of dementias and Alzheimer's and other great stuff that I'm going to let her explain because you guys all know that I am zero scientist. So thank you for for joining me. Yeah, it's my pleasure, Jennifer. So tell us about your background and what you're studying and teaching and all the good stuff. Yeah, so I have always been fascinated by the brain. Um, well, my background, I actually grew up in, in Beijing, China. So I spent my first 20 years there. I came to this country. Uh, I wrote a book about it. It's called Tiger of Beijing. So I came to the U.S. Um, studying at UCLA, and um, I've always been really fascinated by the brain. I was thinking about becoming a neuroscientist but I, I just, I love being a physician because you, you get to, you know, talk to people. I I just, I love that aspect. Um, so I ended up going to psychiatry because, uh, neurology, I saw that as a very frustrating field because so far, um, they're great at, at diagnosis, but there's almost no solution. Um, whereas psychiatry, there are actually solutions and, and those medications are actually quite powerful. So that's why, and I was fascinated by the human behavior. So I went into psychiatry, I did psychiatry for, you know, counting residency, that's 11 years, but I always wanted to incorporate more holistic approach to health. Um, so that's when I ended up going into anti-aging medicine, because I see that as a way of putting everything together, looking at a person as a whole, addressing, you know, their toxicity, hormones, uh, their uh, nutritional deficiencies. So all these aspects that can bring them all together to help the patient, including their mental conditions. So that's kind of where I came from. And and very quickly in the anti-aging field, I got very excited about stem cell therapy because um, not only the the premise is incredible and, and just thinking that these are the cells that made us, right? We all came from a single stem cell. So, you know, the, the potential is incredible, but looking at all the evidence that's been published and looking at all these diseases and, and worldwide research, uh, it's just very exciting to see that they actually work, um, you know, to different degrees for different conditions. But it's very exciting because most of these conditions, the conventional medicine have no solutions for. So, um, yeah, so that's why I became very, um, uh, you know, kind of uh, driven when it comes to the stem cell field. Um, not only I wanted to understand it myself, and I, I also want to help other providers to understand what kind of differences are there are between different types of stem cells, between different sources, and what may be the best for patients and what's the best kind of product and, and how to do it safely and most effectively. So that I ended up find, uh, founding American Academy of Integrative Cell Therapy, um, where I teach a course for physic- to physicians. So, so that's kind of a, a quick overview. <laughs> well, you and I have something in common. I'm also extremely fascinated by the brain. And my listeners know, I, I always make the comment that if I was half my age and had twice the ability in science that I do generally, I would probably go into brain research because it is, it's just really fascinating and everybody's brains are different, which makes it even more challenging. So I'm sure it's a very exciting, interesting, probably never bored field, <laughs> but there's just certain barriers to my knowledge, my knowledge base that, and my I'm not interested in going back to school in my mid fifties. So I'll just talk to people like you. Cause that's, that's easier. <laughs> the brain is very complex for sure. Yeah. So in all these diseases, I think we're all uh, struggling, you know, the still um, um, what's funny is that um, I remember back when I was in residency, it was 2003, I was working in geriatric psychiatry. So I remember our attending who was really, really excited about the brain and taking care of, you know, you know, dementia patients. And he was going to Alzheimer's conference every year. He said, joy, the government has devoted so many billions of dollars, right? So um, within 10 years, I'm telling you, we're going to have a cure for Alzheimer's. 
that was 2003. So we don't have a cure for Alzheimer's nope. because we don't know what's going on in the brain. We still don't understand. I think we really, um, yeah, we, we, we need to, uh, this is why it's exciting to invoke the natural healing potential of the body, uh, something like stem cells that actually offers some hope. So um, yeah, the, the medicine route has, um, has not panned out yet. Definitely. One of the things that I talk about a lot, I'm sure you're familiar with, is all the lifestyle choices that we should be making to maintain as much health as possible and cognitive health as possible, you know, like reducing stress and eating right and all those good things. And I totally lost my train of thought where I was going to hate that. <laughs> oh, well, we'll just yeah. skip to that. Let's see. Whatever. So, oh, yes, I got it. Um do you feel like modern living is just not great? It's a little toxic to our brains? It's not a little toxic. It's very toxic. <laughs> Everything that we're exposed to. I mean, it's it's hard to keep a sane brain, I think, you know, with the toxicity, um, you know, with all what's going on in the air and the water and, and um, you know, on the food we eat and, and all the household cleaning products and the, you know, the... Um, uh, the cosmetic products and, um, and, and even, um, even mold, you know, the, the kind of toxic stuff that's going on, um, in our homes. So all these can, can really, really, you know, do a number on our brain. Um, so I think toxicity is a huge issue. Um, that's certainly, um, you know, triggers and perpetuate, per perpetuate decline. And um, yeah, so the co cognitive de decline, the inflammation in the brain, um, and and you know, and the kind of bad things we put in our body, you know, the the, the bad diet, the alcohol, you know, we just, you know, we're pretty good at uh, you know, <laughs> ruining our health. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> well, my listeners know just so that just to fill you in, my mom drank two liters of diet coke every day. My dad was a terrible eater, so they ate a lot of processed food, bologna, American cheese, white bread. And every time I say that, it makes me feel yucky because I don't eat that way. We know that that was not a good help for her brain. But how so the one question I had about stem cells is basically like. When we when we introduce like a new stem cell for whatever disease we're trying to fix, is that sort of like like a new life, like it's the beginning, like, it's like a refresh. <laughs> I don't, not really sure how to ver word what I'm thinking, but it's, yeah, it's, like you're a not, reset. Um, okay. I, um, in a sense, yeah, I, I don't think it's that simple, but in a sense, because a lot of times we're stuck in an inflammation. So when we're stuck in the cycle of inflammation, then your body can't really regenerate. It can't, um, break free. So that's why people are stuck in pain and, and, and you know, brain fog, and, you know, just the inflammation just keeps going. So the stem cells, um, it could be a great way to calm the inflammation. All of a sudden you're sending these incredible, uh, more regenerative, more healing type of, uh, signals into the body. So you have a chance to, to shift the immune system to some degree and send signals to particular areas, especially those that are damaged, and th for those areas to start to uh, to you know trigger removal of waste product and then you know rekindling of the the the, the vitality of the local cells so they can replenish, they can repair the tissue. Um, so yes, I think it could be a great way to to give massive signals to the body. Because I have seen people such, um, including very experienced doctors who have done all kinds of stuff, uh, including nutritional treatment, hormone replacement, peptides, but it's not until they did stem cells um, that they saw this drastic improvement. So everything else can help to some extent, but if you're running out of stem cells, which we do when we age, we are literally running out of stem cells, you know, drastic, you know, with plummeting. So if we don't have those signals, those intelligence behind 
what's going on in the body. It's just going to be dragging. So once you give back that intelligence, all of a sudden, everything else can work so much better. Your, your body's awakening. So like, for example, this doctor had Lyme disease. He tried everything under the sun and still was not functioning very well. And then with stem cells, that's what just got him over the hump. All of a sudden, he had enough energy to work out, You know, lost some 30 pounds, his cholesterol drastically improved. Um, he just, you know, felt like a new person. So, so this is, you know, from somebody who has done everything else. Really fascinating. There's one th topic we have not discussed on this show at all is this one, which is why I was really excited to talk to you. So what research have you been doing and reading about? And you can give us all the good, inf good 411. For <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So for dementia, you know, for your audience, um, you know, the research, there's, you know, more research probably are in the animal stage. Um, they have shown some benefits. So, um, for example, this is, um, um, looking at a study, looking at, um, treating, um, Alzheimer like disease in mice and using umbilical cord blood cells. And they were able to see reduction of 62% in the amyloid plaque. Um, so that that's, of course, the hallmark of Alzheimer's pathology. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so the, you know, the fact that it's able to reduce um, the plaques, it, that, that definitely, um, which is, you know, this inflammatory marker this of the, of the brain, you know, the response of the brain, the inflammatory response the brain has to the Alzheimer's disease. So, so that is, it's helpful, um, you know, to, to actually see is able to do that. And then, um, you know, not Alzheimer's per se, but there's another study looking at umbilical cord derived mesenchymal stem cells. So they were using it to treat people elderly people with vascular dementia, and they were able to show that it's not only safe, but it improved their cognitive function and daily living activities. Um, so it improved their quality of life. Um, so there's some, you know, some good news in, in, in that they were looking at, um, you know, comparing before the, 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 the treatment and then three months after and six months after. So they saw an improvement. So those are all good, good news. But I think more research are still needed to to really look at um, how you know just how much it can help and and the extent. So when you said a, a minute ago the the stem cell treatment reduced the plaques in the brain about sixty two percent. Do we have any idea how that correlates to a cognitive improvement? Because obviously, if it improved cognitive ability sixty two percent, it would be all over the news. So that's probably way too basic of that's where my science brain goes. Very basic. Do we know like, so 62% reduction in the plaques equals what? 15, 20% improvement in cognition. Do we have any clue? I, yeah. I don't think this article really talked about that. Um, they just think that it, it definitely changed things on the molecular molecular level and uh, it, um, you know, inhibited inflammation that actually plays a big role in Alzheimer's, but they haven't really, you know, talked about exactly what that means for, for the symptoms. That would probably require a much broader human study, correct? Um, yes, human and animals as well. So, um, yeah. So there's various evidence that, you know, like Alzheimer's patients may have stem cell dysfunction. So we have stem cell dysfunction as we age anyhow, but in particular, um, the stem cell pool, you know, the amount of stem cells in Alzheimer's patients are prematurely exhausted, um, including the hematopoietic stem cells. So, so that could be one of the, the reasons that these people are are declining in their function because they don't have the kind of stem cells that are able to help them with, uh, with the, you know, with the regeneration, with repair in the brain. And what's the, as I don't know if this is even an answerable question, but the, what's the difference between the two stem cells? We're created from one stem cell. 
Yeah, but you're referring so, to a second one that I'm not sure I can pronounce properly. <laughs> yeah, mesenchymal stem cells. So there are different types of stem cells. It's very complex. Um, we did start very simple, just one stem cell, right? For fertilized egg. That's who we were. And then the cells start to divide. When they divide and form a ball and start to form, form different structures, there were still huge amount of stem cells. So initially they're all stem cells, like the embryonic stem cells came from the embryo when it's five to seven days old. So all those cells are stem cells, but as they keep dividing and dividing and start specializing, then you have specialized organ cells and then you have stem cells. So the stem cells also, you know, have various differentiations and, um, and, and, and specialization. So some stem cells can end up only be able to produce cells in the blood. Some cells can only become, you know, you know, bone cells. Some can only become liver. So they, you start to specialize, but there are all these gradations. It's almost infinite level of specialization. And, and to some extent, it still exists in the body, not, you know, to the point where we were developing, but um, <clears throat> we still have various stem cells or tissue specific stem cells in all our organs um, so they can regenerate the tissue, um, you know, in any particular, you know, organ. And then there's these mesenchymal stem cells, which are all over your body. Anywhere there's blood vessels, blood supply, there are these mesenchymal stem cells. So they came from a particular germ layer. That's how they got their name. But really what ended up happening is that these cells became the messenger cells. So this, the doctor, Dr. Kaplan, who discovered these cells actually wanted to rename them medicinal signaling cells because he believes that's what they're doing. It's not so much that they are, you know, trying to become cells of the meso, you know, mesoderm layer, which are, you know, includes the bones, muscles and, and, and um, fat and cartilage, but um, they actually serve as a signaling apparatus throughout your body. So it, um, it senses what's going on in your blood and also senses what's going on in your local tissue. So it's able to provide this, this monitor and, 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 and then also, um, you know, kind of, uh, you know, enforcer of, of the regenerative um, uh, process. So by sensing what's going through your blood, it can find out what's going on in your immune system, what, you know, what, what's, you know, what's the status of your whole body and what signals are sent through the blood that indicates that some place needs help. So they could actually squeeze themselves into the blood vessels and try to swim upstream to find where the signals are and then get out of the blood vessels to start talking to local tissue and then also talking to your, your, your entire system you know, through the blood. So they, they, they coordinate, they can bring the immune system in, you know, tell the immune system, Hey, we need some white blood cells. We need to come and, and destroy these cells that are, are diseased, um, and are dysfunctional or, or too old. Uh, we need to destroy them. And then it's going to talk to the local stem cells, telling them to start, um, working, uh, you know, basically, you know, multiply and, and repair the local tissue. So it, it has those functions. So these are very important group of cells. And that's why they're kind of the, the gold standard, you know, at this point um, to treat various conditions, because we realize how powerful these cells are, not so much because they go into a particular place to become the cells, but they provide this, this, you know, orchestrating role to tell your body to regenerate. So that's why mesenchymal stem cells or MSC, you know, why they're so important. I think medicinal messenger is definitely easier to pronounce, but that is really fascinating. Medicinal signaling like, cells? I don't think yeah. that, I actually think it's more difficult. Medicinal <laughs> signaling cells. <laughs> well, I, like I said, not science. So I'm not good at pronouncing different kinds of words like that. So what... What are you seeing in the research for the dementias and maybe just overall brain health? I don't know if there's research on that. Probably not because that's too general. But what is it you're working on and you're seeing and like what kind of exciting things can we put our hopes and prayers behind? Well, first of all, they have shown that uh, stem cell treatments like a regular stem cell infusions um, they've done this in animal models. They were able to show 
that it improves the the cognitive function of the animals and also their physical function. So it extended their lifespan by about 30%. So if when they are their you know middle age, they start to do regular stem cells. Um, that, that extends their lifespan about about 30%. But even if they're older, you know, age 75, you know, human equivalent age of 75 years of age, when they start to give them regular young stem cells, um, they live, you know, the, the time remaining they have, they actually live three times as long as the, the mice that did not get stem cells. So it does extend their lifespan, but not just lifespan, but also health span. So not only they look better, their fur is shinier, their spine is straighter, their you know, they're really mobile, but also they're smarter. Um, they're able to go through the mazes better. So their cognition was protected. Um, and when they actually uh, analyzed the neural neurotransmitters and, and inflammation markers and growth factors in the muscles and in the brain, so they looked at all these markers for both, um, they saw that stem cells were able to revert these, um, these organs you know, or, or these markers back to the younger state. So all these are markers of degeneration and it, and show that it actually reversed them. So, so that's, you know, in that sense, it's, it's probably very protective, you know, if you're reversing it back to the younger state, especially dementia is kind of the age dependent state and is, you know, tightly related to, um, to inflammation. Um, you've heard of the phrase type three diabetes. So mm-hmm. diabetes also is an inflammatory condition. So all these are very tied in together. Um, so as far as, um, um, you know, research, you know, like I said, there's more, probably more animal data than the human data, but it it is very promising. You know, the one I mentioned about vascular dementia, um, helping improving, uh, these people's function and improving their cognition. The, um, you know, what I've seen in my own clinic, I've treated Alzheimer's patients. I've definitely seen, um, kind of, um, um, there can be definitely a fast anti-inflammatory effect. So, because I see sometimes people's brain get stuck in a particular state. Like I have had this one patient who really, you know, she was only in her early sixties, but has severe dementia. Um, and uh, she didn't even recognize her husband. And she mm-hmm. was in my office and she wanted to marry me. I mean, it was just, she was completely out there, right? So um, she had not been able to eat for two months. She, 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 she couldn't feed herself. She would uh, sit in front of a plate of food and she would just stare at it. She wouldn't do anything. And then the day after the stem cell treatment, she said she was hungry. The plate of food was in front of her and she just picked up the knife and fork and just ate it. And her husband was looking at her in shock and she was like, what, what's your problem? <laughs> you know, I'm just eating. Um, so what I believe is that the severe brain inflammation was blocking her brain signals. One area can't communicate with another area. So with the stem cells, all of a sudden there's this rapid anti-inflammatory action. All of a sudden the cell cell communication can happen. And that's why she, all of a sudden it's like, you know, the boulevard is running through and the signals got crossed and she was able to pick up the knife and fork. So, um, yeah, and I've seen, um, people, so I also train a lot of doctors and some doctors were, um, you know, treating other dementia patients and definitely have seen really good results, um, including like, uh, reversing incontinence, you know, people instead of almost in a vegetative state to, to coming back to life and returning, you know, personality. So we've definitely seen some really interesting results. You wouldn't expect the treatment to work so well in 24 hours. Cause it seems like everything always takes time. So that is really interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was, it was very surprising for me too. Yeah, twenty. I mean, that's a big difference between not being able to eat and then just doing it normally the way she probably did. Yeah, you know, many years before she was ill. That's right. Yeah, but I want to make sure I'm not making any claims. So these are just my experiences. I'm trying to help people who are desperate. Um, you know, right now the FDA only has um, the uh, approval for using umbilical cord blood stem cells. Uh, yeah, blood stem cells to treat um, uh, people who have vascular, you know, basically blood uh, disorders. So to replenish their their whole blood generating system. 
and um, everything else will be off label. But, you know, what we're doing is uh, tissue transplantation, you know, is not that different from blood transfusion or organ transplantation. It's, it's, you know, it's not a drug is a tissue from one human to another, right? The transplantation help regenerate, help replenish what the other person doesn't have. Um, so, so that's how we're operating is, is through these tissue transplantation. So we're not, you know, it, it just, it's a fine line, you know, I'm not going to claim, you know, make any claims, um, but, you know, by transplanting um, particular cells with particular capabilities, you are able to help uh, the recipient to replenish that kind of capacity. So if somebody was interested in this type of treatment, do you need a donation of stem cells from like a family member? Now we're going to take a quick break for an ad. These ads help me continue to bring the show to you for free. When I learned that despite eating as healthy as possible, we can still have undernourished brains, I was frustrated. I also live in a farming community, so I'm aware that our food isn't grown as well as we need. Learning about Neuro Reserves, Relevate, and how it's formulated to fix this problem convinced me to give them a try. Now I know many of you are skeptical, as was I. However, I know it's working because of one simple change. My sweet tooth is gone. I didn't expect that, and it's not something other users have commented on, but here's some truth. My brain always wanted something sweet. Now fruit usually did the trick, but not always. One bad night's sleep would fire up my sugar cravings so much they were almost impossible to ignore. You ever have your brain screaming for a donut? Well, for me, those days are gone. It's been about six months since I started taking the supplement and I have no regrets. I believe in my results so much that I'm passing on my 15% discount to you. Try it for two or three months and see if you have a miraculous sweet tooth cure or maybe just better focus and clarity. It's definitely worth a try. Now back to our conversation. Uh, no, I actually wouldn't advise that, um, especially because it's, if you're using adult source, uh, the problem with adult source is that um, as an adult, so even if you're in your 20s and 30s, your stem cells are nowhere near as potent as what's in that birth tissue. So that's what I prefer. Birth tissue, that's the umbilical cord placenta. So that's everything that came out with the baby, right? So the baby's safe and sound and happy and healthy, but we cut the cord and we put the cord and placenta, everything into an, a saline bag and shipped it to tissue bank overnight to be processed, to get these powerful cells out of them. So these cells that's trapped in the birth tissue is actually younger than the baby cells. They were trapped when the baby was forming. And so these are kind of have a lot of primitive characteristics. So these are the cells that we're utilizing. So they, they kind of have the best of both worlds. They're more way more potent. So I, I did a lectures on YouTube is called are all MSCs created equal, right? Where we're talking about mesenchymal stem cells. Those are MSCs. Are they created equal? No, they're not equal at all. If you're getting them from your own fat or bone marrow versus getting it from the young source from the birth tissue, it's drastically different. And I was showing just research studies after studies after studies showing what has been discovered. You know, it's not my opinion. It's just what's been shown. And they've shown not only the younger cells uh, can produce more growth factors, have more anti-inflammatory effects. They have longer telomeres. They have more generations left. Um, they are able to um, also uh, differentiate in more, you know, like bigger variety of cells into more types of cells. And they're also safer. So because they have better ability to detect cancer cells, instead of just telling everything to grow like our adult stem cells. Um, these younger cells have the capability of recognizing changes in these cancer cells. So these are bad cells that you want to get rid of. So these younger stem cells still re almost like still, you know, they, they, they're still remembers. And I call the older stem cells, you know, catching cellular dementia. It's almost like these cells are just getting too old and just lost some marbles. They couldn't figure out that these are cancer cells. So they tell everything to grow. That's why I think it's risky to use a person's own because 
with the toxic world we live in, most of us have cancer cells that's popping up here and there, but your immune system, your immune system is strong. You're able to get rid of it. But if you put stem cells in it, stem cells is able to tell everything to grow. And if those stem cells are old and they don't have the intelligence to detect cancer cells, then they would just tell cancer cells to grow. Um, and then they've shown that in studies, they've shown that directly in a Petri dish and on an animal's body. When you put fat derived stem cells next to the cancer cells, they grow. But when you put umbilical cord derived uh, mesenchymal stem cells next to these cancer cells, the, these cancer cell, these cancer cell tumors start to shrink and they start to go away. So that's how drastically different it is. So when it comes to your question about the donor, um, you know, if you want adult source, you know, that's a whole different story. Um, but I do prefer, and I think it's my responsibility to give patients the more potent and the safer source, because, you know, some years ago when I got into the field, um, it was wide open to me. Do I want to use a person's own fat or bone marrow, or do I want to go for the birth tissue source? And that's why I just, you know, kind of dived in and started looking at articles and articles and just doing comparisons between these different sources, because it's my responsibility to give patients the best. Um, so when it comes to the donors, because these stem cells, um, you know, younger stem cells, especially MSCs, they, they evade the immune system. So they're actually, it's called immune privileged. So they're privileged, you know, that they don't get your immune system all, you know, riled up and, you know, start to attack the cells. They, first of all, they don't even have the surface receptors to mark them as individuals. Uh, but also they calm the immune system down. They have this modulating effect with the immune system. Actually, when you give stem cells, these mesenchymal stem cells, along with organ transplantation, the organ transplantation tend to stay. It, it calms the system to be more accepting. So, so these are the cells, you know, these are different cell types. You can, you can use mesenchymal stem cells, or you can use a combination of cells um, that are, that exist in the core blood. So the mesenchymal stem cells is very rich in the cord tissue. So the umbilical cord, that long cord. So all, you know, wrapped around, you know, the blood vessels, there are these areas called Wharton's jelly. And those areas are very rich in these mesenchymal stem cells. And these are very young and primitive mesenchymal stem cells compared to adult sources. And, but in the blood, there are also some hematopoietic progenitor cells, endothelial progenitor cells. So all these cells have their own functions and they can kind of all work together. So, so my preference is to put all the cells types together and, and, and use that synergistic action. Makes perfectly good sense. Cause that's kind of how they're designed for lack of mm -hmm. a better term. That's they work right. all together. That's interesting. Yeah. Divinely that's designed. Yes. <laughs> that is really interesting. Now my daughter is almost 31. So I'm having to like scrape the rust off a few brain cells here. As I recall, when she was born, I don't believe they saved the placenta and the umbilical cord. I thought they sent it for pathology, which I don't. Now, I'll tell you, probably um, only 10% of people actually decide to save the cord um, and, and save the tissue and cells because it does cost a few thousand dollars to store them. So a lot of people decide not to. Um, and those are the people that we ask for donations from. So, and we'll only ask people who are, you know, younger than 30, who are doing elective C-sections so that the, you know, so the placental, so all the birth tissue will not be contaminated when it goes through the, the vaginal canal. And, um, and then they go through very, very strict screening. So even stricter, you know, we, we make it even stricter than the organ transplantation screening. Um, so, you know, we, we ask every question under the sun that, that can have something to do with uh, the quality of that birth tissue. So, so the mothers will have to fill the form out and, uh, and there's no incentive for people to lie, to donate, you know, in the U S uh, maybe in the, in other countries, there are incentives that, such as Russia, because I've heard people actually will, you know, get pregnant and then abort the baby to get paid um, is really horrendous. But in this country, the selling of human tissue is illegal. So you cannot even compensate these mothers, you know, with, you know, like even a token gift. So, you know, there's no, no incentive for them to lie on these forms. Um, so they're asked about, 
their own personal health history, their family history, their travel history, work history, toxic exposures, or you know, sexual partners, and uh, and the prenatal history. So everything you can imagine is is screened. And once the the tissue is obtained, right, the birth tissue in the saline bag, uh, it's going to be tested for all the infectious diseases, um, you know, as strict as the organ transplant um, testing criteria. But we we do even more. And, um, and so when I, when I say we, I also, um, founded a Chara Biologics, which is a stem cell company, because I really wanted people to have the best quality of products. Um, and I've seen a lot of, um, things going on in the industry, a lot of uh, people going in there just to make quick and big amount of money without regard to safety or to the science. So I really wanted to, to do things right. Um, so, um, so, so. So we we want to do everything we can to get people, you know, the the, the best product possible, and um, and so we test the the tissue for all these infectious diseases that's usually tested, and then after the product is is obtained, which is all you know, minimally manipulated, so we don't use enzymes or chemicals, and we don't grow them into massive numbers like what they do overseas. So what they were in the tissue is what they are in the product. And, um, and once the product is made, they have to be sent to a toxicity, I mean, in a uh, sterility lab to look at any kind of contamination that may be introduced during the manufacturing process. So that takes two weeks to come back because they have to culture it to make sure nothing grows. Um, and then there's no endotoxins produced. Once that result comes back um, as green light, that's when the product can be shipped out to, to providers. That sounds intense. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Which serious. is good. <laughs> it's, it's a serious thing we're doing here. Yeah. So how would, how would you, like if we, you, I should say, find that this really is like a significant treatment or maybe even a cure, that would be wonderful. How do we end up? with more of these, these stem cells that you're talking about? Cause it doesn't sound like they're in high supply. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this is a huge question, you know, about the state of stem cell therapy right now. Um, so, you know, I, I would never use the word cure and I think, uh, Alzheimer's is probably way more complex than I think the stem cells may be able to help them function better and improve, you know, and, and bring back some functions, but I don't know, it's going to be completely reversing everything, you know, that, you know, I, I haven't seen any evidence for that, but definitely can improve their function and can, you know, instead of just slowing decline, hopefully, you know, actually getting them to go back, you know, gaining some function. So that I have seen. Um, but the, um, I, I think the, the government agencies want to regulate stem cells as drugs. And, um, I agree with them. If you do manipulate the products, um, like if you start using chemicals and you start to use different, um, you know, molecules to induce them to go a certain directions and, and then you start growing them into huge numbers. And when all these things happen, when you do all these things to the cells, they can change. Um, but what I use and what a lot of doctors use right now are these uh, tissue transplantation products. They're not manipulated in, in any way. We're counting on their natural intelligence. Once it's introduced to the body, then they will do what needs to be done. Um, so so that's, um, that's the, you know, it, it, it could be, you know, one reason why it's so safe, but it could be also the other reason that there's some limitations, you know, there's only so much we can do. Um, but I definitely see it as a great, uh, great tool, um, not to help only to help prevent the declines, but also to maybe reverse some of the, you know, the, the symptoms. Um, I, you know, I, I think at some point, um, there's going to be, you know, there, there's going to be a cost reduction, uh, because right now it is expensive. Um, I'm hoping that it's going to be more available someday. Um, but, um, you know, I think because of the, um, 
you know, I, I feel like the doctors who are doing the stem cells are taking on certain risks uh, because it's not generally accepted yet. So, so that was one reason the cost is still high. Um, and also the, just the cost of the cells, they are, you know, they are expensive. So that's where we're at right now. It's still really fascinating. Going to like, going to be dwelling on that the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's, I've been, um, a volunteer and an advocate with the Alzheimer's association and their goal was to find the first survivor of Alzheimer's by 2025, which I think they might have stopped saying that at this point, <laughs> because that's mm -hmm. not looking promising, but it's, it's very interesting to, to learn about what other things are going on, you know, especially for those people like my listeners who are still caring for somebody with this disease. Cause it's just, it's so tragic. You know, my, my mom died at 77 and it, you know, you, I, there was times I was just angry at the world because I wanted her to be hanging out with the grandkids and traveling and doing all that stuff. And, you know, not thinking that I was her best friend instead of her daughter. It was just, you know, it's, it's hard. So mm -hmm. it's, I'm excited that there are people like you out there. You know, I get and it's like without being too cliche, like on the cutting edge, the forefront, all those silly phrases, but really kind of looking at things in a different, you know, like you're looking at it from a different perspective and that might give us a different, better answer, hopefully. So if yeah. people are interested in learning more about this, where can they find out more information? Like what's your website, all that good stuff. Um, my YouTube channel is really helpful. So it's just Joy Kong MD. So, you know, my last name is K O N G and, um, and then they can also go to, you know, our clinic site, which is Uplift Center. So actually it's in the back, upliftcenter.com. Um, Lift is with a Y, which we will link both of those in the show notes. So yeah. you guys don't have to remember and, all that stuff. The academy, the academy I mentioned may be really helpful. You know, it's just aaict.org. So American Academy of Integrative Cell Therapy. So there's some research studies, there's some resources and case studies. So people can go on there and take a look. Uh, I think that would be a very interesting, um, you know, place to to learn more about stem cells. Yeah, because it's it's fascinating, and maybe you don't have to have a great aptitude for science to to benefit from some of this knowledge. And just just you know, we all know dynamic learning is good for our brains. And people like my daughter love to when they find something interesting, they kind of she does a deep deep research dive on things. So I like to provide that to the listeners as much as I can. Is there any last tidbits you want to leave people before I let you rush off to your other important things today? Um, another thing I want to tell people is that, you know, more is not better because uh, I know a lot of people want to get stem cell treatment in places like Panama, Mexico, um, you know, um, Costa Rica, you know, all these places are popping up, Colombia. Um and all these places pretty much have one thing in common is that they grow the cells to large numbers. Um, so they will put them in an incubator. So you will have the original cells, like what I talked about, how you obtain them, and then we'll put them in an incubator to grow them to large numbers. So I just want people to be aware in this process of growing, a lot of times the cells would not divide equally into two stem cells. They often divide into a daughter cell, which has further differentiate to gain more function, got more surface receptors that can't be destroyed by the immune system, by the way, the, you know, you, when you start to express your own characteristics, um, then the immune system may recognize it as foreign and may get rid of it. So that's the daughter cell. So, so the stem cell will always replenish itself. So it will produce one stem cell, one daughter cell, but, you know, depending on how they're growing it, um, you know, they're trying to mimic the human body. That's what's funny. You know, like the, the best growing techniques is mimicking the 3D, uh, you know, edgeless uh, environment of the human body. And, you know, like, okay, why don't we just put in the human body? So, so anyhow, uh, what they are doing when they, you know, the under artificial conditions, these cells may divide, you may end up with a lot of daughter cells and a smaller pool of stem cells. And also cells change, especially depending on how many generations you've, you've, you know, letting, you've let them grow. So, you know, after about the fourth generation, things definitely start to degrade. Um, so, you, you, you know, I know it's much more economical for these companies to grow them for many generations. So they have, 
a huge number of cells, you're definitely cutting down the cost. And then you just portion a, a small amount. You can tell people, oh, this is 200 million cells and, and 300 million cells. It sounds like a lot. But if you have trillions and trillions of cells and you're just putting a little, you know, tiny little, you know, scoop out of that and giving it to people sounds great, but doesn't mean it's as potent. So this is why I've seen empirically when people come to my clinic, they're getting the cells probably at a number of one tenth of what they were getting in these overseas clinics. And they're getting as good of results, if not better. So I just want people to be aware of that. Well, that makes sense. And Okay, back to my basic science knowledge here. As we age, our cells, when they replicate, they don't replicate as well. Like the older we get, the less they replicate. They start to make a lot of mistakes. Yeah. Right and there. That's a good way of putting it. Okay, good. I know a few things. <laughs> I do believe I learned that from my daughter, though. So, <laughs> like uh -huh. I said, when she, yeah. she finds something and interesting. This, this just to give people an idea of how much stem cells we lose when we age. So when we were born, every one in 10,000 cells is a, is a mesenchymal stem cell. So these messenger cells, right? MSC. And when you reach your teenage years, it has already become one in a hundred thousand. So from one in 10 to one in a hundred thousand. And then when you reach your forties, it becomes one in 400,000. And when you reach your eighties is one in 2 million. And that's why we wrinkle up. That's why we, you know, all the organs start to decline is because we are running out of the, the, the source of, of information to regenerate. That's just so fascinating. Like, even though this is not my area of strong knowledge, I still find it really fascinating, which is why I would go into brain research if I was uh -huh. younger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I hope your listeners, you know, has enjoyed this and found this interesting. Um, I did for lot, sure. Yeah, there are a lot of nitty gritties, you know, about this. Like I in my on my YouTube channel, I talked about other people's DNA in our body and what that means. Um, so you know, I have different snippets, you know, talking about all these aspects and um, and and apparently having other people's DNA in our body is is a common human experience they found out that 60 percent of women have y chromosomes in their in their body so this is just you know it's we carry other people's dna you know having human other human cells in our body is actually not as big of a deal as you think um and of course we've seen you know transplanting human cells into onto animals body and it has grown uh and stayed on animals body became part of like the skin part of the animal so it's um, even cross species, it, it can happen. So between humans is not as big of a deal as people think, but I go into a lot more details and there's some really interesting information I talk about. Awesome. Well, now I'm going to have to go look because now I'm really super <laughs> fascinated. <laughs> well, thank you very much. This has been, like I said, again, fascinating and educational and definitely gives you some food for thought. And so I hope yeah. everybody checks out Joy's YouTube channel. Again, that's linked in the show notes and the website. And if you have any questions, you can probably go over to the Academy website. Well, I'll link that all of that good stuff. So thank you again. I appreciate your time today. And we will let you run off and save the world. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. I enjoyed chatting with you. Oh, good. Thank you. Fading Memories is also available wherever you get your favorite podcasts.